ScriptKit widgets now support drag and drop, so if I run this script and come into Finder, I can drop some files on there, and then any of those files, I can drag it and drop it somewhere else. So what this looks like with a widget, once I get my widget back on drop, I can grab the event dataset files and then do whatever I want the files. Right now, I'm just setting the state of the widget and passing in files, and the widget is using v4 to loop over the files and display them. So they're displayed there, and then it adds a data file attribute, and that data file attribute is found when you do on mouse down and you get the data set that file, or the file here is the data file attribute, which means you can invoke start drag, which is also new. So once you pass that file path in, it'll start dragging and whatever, whatever you drop is going to be that file path. So you can imagine building these little widgets, these little applications that uh, you can drop stuff onto them and then process them in FFmpeg or any other application. And once they're done, you can then push that state into the widget and display the progress and all those sorts of things. And then if you want to, you can even drag that stuff out and use it in other applications. The next thing to show off is say you use a script often like this screenshot current tweet script. Right now it's at the top because it's the most recently edited script. So if you ever want to reset that, you can hit command zero and that refreshes the prompt. This is actually really helpful if you move the prompt out of the way for something and you close it. It assumes when you open it again, it wants to be in the same position, but if you hit command zero, it'll refresh and move it back. Uh, so back to the defaults. And let's say you want to type S and you want the screenshot current tweet script to jump to the top. Now we can do this by adding into our script alias S. And now when I open the prompt, you can see that it's the most recent, so it's up there. The command zero, I'll type S. And so it jumps to the top because S is the alias. Now the only restriction here is that the alias has to be within the search results. So if this was blah, and you try and use the blah alias, then it's not gonna show up because it's not in the results of that search. So you may want to add to the description if you wanna use some sort of alias that's really different from the name, uh, just blah, so that when you type blah, it jumps to the top of those results because ScriptKit searches the descriptions as well. Now, finally, let's talk about themes. If you go over to the kit tab, you search for theme, You'll see the theme selector. This used to be a pro feature. I unlocked it so that everyone can use it. And you can go through in here and select different themes. Uh, so any of these, once you hit enter, um, I'm gonna hit enter on the light theme. Uh, it'll store that and now you can use the light theme uh, as long as you want. Uh, you can also, I worked together with someone in the community to make this script called widget theme. Um, and I'll link to that. So if I use widget theme picker, You'll see it'll open a widget, and this widget has the different colors that we can set this to. So I'll set the foreground to red or black, and you can see how that's changing over there. Uh, we'll keep it at black. I'll change the background to uh, white. Uh, the accent color can be like a nice uh, green, I don't know. Not doing a great job designing something, but you can see what's going on here. And then finally, the um, opacity, you can tweak how opaque you want it to be. So, oh, and the UI is that bottom bar and the highlighted stuff. So you can play with that to your heart's content. Um, as soon as you find something you like, just hit escape and that'll store that and you can use that. If you want to reset, just go back to that kit tab, search for theme again, and you can go back to the script kit theme there. Uh, just hit enter and it'll reset to the default. If you have any questions, hit up our ScriptKit discussions on GitHub. There's more than a thousand posts there for you to search through and find something that probably answers your question or post a new one. And I'm definitely happy to help and happy scripting.